As you might know, my goal with this channel is to help you make more and better music in a short amount of time. Yeah, I know, sounds ambitious, but uh, it's doable, uh, trust me. If you approach this a little bit different from how I did this when I started out, you will get to a much better level a lot quicker than I managed. I figured I'd give you four pointers today, or four sort of like principles that I tried to follow today, which I didn't know back then. Let's get into it. The first one is in many ways a really obvious one. But at the same time, I completely missed the mark on this one the, when I started out making music. Uh, it's basically just make a lot of music. By making a lot of music, I don't mean spend many hours in your studio. I mean make a lot of different tunes. I mean do the whole process from start to finish many times over. At the time I started making music, I, I mean I had dabbled a little bit in, in it before. But when I really started to make music, uh, that came at the same time uh, where I had uh, I had eight months off between jobs, and I had this uh, I had this goal that I would spend that this time making music, which I did. To be fair, probably not too efficiently because I had a bit too much time on my hands and. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of truth to the saying, if you want something done, ask a busy man to do it. But anyway, over those eight months, it, it's ridiculous looking back at it, but uh, over those eight months, I managed to make one single tune. I made one remix for uh, a friend of mine. And I mean, I, I beat that tune completely to the, to the ground many times over. I, I can't even remember how many versions of it I had made when I was uh, finished, but I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I made over a hundred different versions of it before I actually finished it. And I, it is, in my opinion, the completely wrong way to approach this when you're a beginner, or for that sake, uh, at any level. I mean, what you need to do if you want to make be good at this is just repeating the process over and over and over again. And that means starting from a blank canvas, coming up with the ideas, trying to fit those ideas together, making an arrangement, adding the effects, leaving the tune alone for a bit, coming back to it, add more stuff, remove stuff, mix it, master it if you want to do that as well. Basically doing the whole process over, not just trying to perfect one tune for, for weeks or months at an end. I still to this day try to make a sketch every single day. I wouldn't call those finished tunes, but it's basically just something that could possibly be a tune sometimes in the future. To be fair, I don't manage to make a sketch every single day, but it's a goal of mine. And um, it's simply because I know how valuable the, the whole practice of going through the, this process uh, is to me as a creator. The second tip sort of ties in with the first one, uh, and it's try to work as quickly as you can when you make music. There are many reasons for this. The first one is that the longer you sit with a tune or the longer you work on a tune and hear it over and over again, uh, the more fatigued your ears will get and the, the harder it will be for you to judge it with any sort of objectivity. So the quicker you can be finished with something and leave it alone, the better it is in my opinion. And also, when you, if, you, if you sit with a tune for a very long time, my experience is that I will get very focused on details. At least in the sort of like the creative phase when you're trying to come up with ideas, you don't want to be too focused on details, you want to see the big picture. There's nothing more ruining to your creativity than trying to find the perfect kick drum when you're still in the idea generation phase. There is time for that as well, um, but that in my, in my experience that comes much later in the process. There's no point in finding the perfect kick drum or finding the perfect bass sound when you still haven't made the, the melodies or the actual bass line. When you're in the creative phase, accept that everything won't be perfect. Just make something, try to come up with ideas as quickly as possible, get them down, move on. And when you have all these ideas done, it's really a good thing to just bounce it and leave it alone for at least a few days. But I try to not listen back to it for at least a week, because then I can come back to it and almost forget that I had made this and listen back to it with fresh ears. If you put it on your phone and listen to it every time you're out walking or on a bus, you will completely ruin that experience for yourself. And my third tip is don't watch tutorials on YouTube unless you have something specific to figure out. I mean, if you want to get good at making music, it won't help you to know how a compressor works or know a lot of music theory. I mean, I'm not saying it's negative to know those things, but it's um, it's not what's gonna move the needle for you. What's gonna move the needle for you is getting the practice in. And if you spend all your time on YouTube, getting all this theoretical knowledge in, it won't help you. So my approach to this is, I, st I use YouTube as well for this, this kind of things, but I only use it if there's something specific I wanna figure out that I can't figure out on my own, and it's easier to watch a tutorial on it on YouTube than it is to 
open the manual and try to figure it out myself. Our hours in a day is limited and if you spend all your time on YouTube or for that sake on other social media platforms, there simply will not be any time left for you to make music and your time is much more wisely spent if you spend them actually practicing this thing, trying to figure it out yourself than listening to some guy on YouTube telling you how to do stuff. Kind of ironic coming from a guy on YouTube, I know. And my fourth sort of pointer or tip today is don't wait to make music until you have the right gear. There is no magic bullet for making music or making great music. It only comes with you mastering your uh, the tools you have at your disposal. And there is a lot to be said about ha keeping the same tools for a long amount of time and, and actually mastering those things. And this applies no matter what kind of tools you work with, whether you work, decide to work with hardware or you decide to work with software in a, in a DAW. It's, it's the same thing, just try not to overwhelm you, yourself with too many options. Keep the same tools, keep them for a long time and really master those things. Because no new thing you buy will instantly make you better at making music. I personally was very guilty at this. I probably switched my studio upside down and switched out all my tools every three months for years there in the beginning. At least when I started to afford, uh, be able to afford gear. And looking back, it really held me back for, for many, many years because I, I never really learned to use anything properly. I, I had a general idea on how they worked on the, on the surface and I could make music with it but it, I, I never really mastered anything because when I got to the point where I started to understand something properly I kind of tired of it and bought something new and sold the old bit and then the old thing and then um, I kind of started from scratch again. So as with any many things in life it's better to know a few things very well than having a general idea how, how a lot of things work. And a bit of a bonus tip for you here in the end. Try to use small pockets of time as much as you can. And try to fit small pockets of time into your day where you can actually make music. I mean, if you're gonna wait for the time when you have three hours or a full day to make music, it's gonna be very rare that you actually get to do it. If you manage to just sit down whenever you have half an hour or even 15 minutes to make music, it's my, in my experience, when you get started like that, it's much easier to come back to it and find other pockets of time throughout your day where you can, where you can maybe put in another 15 or 20 or 30 minutes. And I mean, over time, that obviously adds up. So that is... Um, what I would do if I started out today, and I mean, these principles are principles I follow to this day myself. And um, in many ways, I regret not having anyone tell me to do these things when I started out because I could have saved, saved years and improved a lot faster than I managed to do. But I mean, there's no, there's no reason crying over what, what's in the past. So uh, I'm just hoping this video can be helpful for you guys and uh, help you avoid doing some of the mistakes I did. So to sum up, make a lot of music, work as quickly as you can, don't spend all your time watching tutorials on YouTube, and don't wait until you have the right tools to do it. Just use whatever you have. And if you do that, I can promise you, you will improve a lot faster at this stuff than I ever managed to do. And it will also, in the process, be a lot more fun for you to make music. So yeah, good luck. And now get off YouTube. See you in the next one.